Hi, I'm Shandra Prophet. Welcome to a special episode of Prophet's Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. The 60 Series Land Cruiser has become exceptionally popular, and we get lots of inquiries about their value. So we decided to make this episode for those of you interested in purchasing an FJ60 or a 62. So when I'm looking at an FJ60, I always think about it in three main categories. The first one is whether or not it's been messed with because so many people modify and change and adapt their vehicles over time. Uh, some of that stuff makes all Land Cruisers worth less money. So I look and see how stock it is, how factory it is. And to be honest with you, the more stock, the more factory, the more interested I am in it. I don't want to offend anybody, but FJ60s and FJ62s that have had a lot of backyard garage fabrications done to them are often, I don't think I'd say worth less money, but certainly the additions didn't add much value. So you want to make sure that you're not paying for something that you shouldn't. Typically homemade bumpers and homemade roof racks like this one don't add value to the Land Cruiser and while are still functional, probably aren't what you want in the end. Look for things that were professionally done if you want to have accessories on your Land Cruiser that make sense. If the Land Cruiser checks out and it hasn't had a bunch of weird stuff done to it, then I start looking at the body. The body is actually the most important thing to consider when buying an FJ60. And it's because no matter what's wrong with the vehicle mechanically, the body is gonna be the expensive part to fix and or restore if you wanna have a really nice unit. You're paying for sound body with not much rust and not much damage. Now, FJ60's rust in a number of areas. So one of the places that an FJ60 rusts and maybe the most common place is the rear quarter panel and above the wheel wells on the rear wheel wells. This rust is common and thanks to some companies who are building patch panels for this now, like the ones you can get from Cool Cruisers of Texas, it's not that bad to fix. The secret though is to cut all of the rust out and fix it all or it's gonna come back. Any attempt to conceal this rust improperly is going to show. You'll see what looks like bubbling paint or perhaps cracks in body filler if somebody has tried to conceal this rust without cutting it out. To be honest with you, I would rather see the rust just like it is on this red one where nothing has been done, the rust is in full view and you can just see the work that needs to be done to fix it. In addition to the quarter panel rust that I showed you on the Land Cruiser that's in the showroom, they tend to rust from about here down in lots of other places too. Some of them easier to fix than others. So this front fender happens to have some rust issues and it's a little trickier to fix the front fender than it is the quarter panel because there isn't a patch available for this. So you either have to replace the fender and unfortunately fenders are aftermarket and so they don't fit very good or you have to hand fabricate or even cut this piece out of another FJ60. So look at the rust on the outside of the door which is easy to fix but make sure it hasn't crept around to the inside of the door like this. This doesn't look like a big deal right here but trust me it's coming. Under this seam and in this pinch weld and especially right here it's a little bit thicker to my fingers it's raised out. And that means there's rust in there growing and spreading this apart. And it's not gonna be very long, especially in harsh conditions where that causes a rust hole on the inside on the outside. So all four doors, in the corners especially, the back corner of the door and the front corner of the door, make sure there's no signs of rust anywhere. Even the smallest fleck of rust could be a potential problem. So this Land Cruiser is actually really rusty from about the top of the wheel wells down, and it even has some uncommon rust in a spot right here that you don't normally see. Uh, this Land Cruiser, however, belongs to a family that is very attached, and so we're gonna attack all this rust and fix it, and we'll make sure that it's good. One thing that this Land Cruiser has going for it, though, is right here. This roof, it's not rusty. There's a little surface rust here, which is no big deal, but Land Cruisers, some Land Cruisers have a roof rust problem that's very severe, and I'll take it and show you a couple of those right now. If you've watched all of our episodes, you've seen at least two where we were cutting the roof off of FJ60s and 62s and replacing them. And we're standing here among a handful of FJ60s that have been scalped 
uh, in favor of saving another Land Cruiser and putting it back on the road. These are all the old roofs that we had to cut off. And if you look at them close, you can see why. This roof rot is only common to a few Land Cruisers. It's not something that happens to most of them. And the funny thing is, is if they're rusty on top, they're usually not rusty on the bottom. But rust like this means you have to separate the top from the Land Cruiser, and that's a pretty big job. You can see that a previous repair shop tried to cover over this rust and some body filler, and that just never works. It, all it does is separate in the body filler and the paint falls off. But there's some other tops here that have the exact same problem, just lurking. Wouldn't be long before they look like this. If you look, you'll see little bumps where the rust is starting to bubble out from under the paint. This is actually not the original paint, and this is a, an attempt at a cover-up too, which is a shame because the owner that bought this spent a lot of money and didn't realize that the roof was gonna have to be replaced. But if there's, if there's any rust that look like this, even if it looks minor, there's a really good chance that it's not, and that means that that Land Cruiser is gonna need a lot more money put into it on the auto body and paint side. So another pretty common place for FJ60s especially to rust is the bottom of the tailgate. This one happens to be particularly bad, and if you get rust to this level or even partially this bad, usually the right thing to do or the easiest thing to do is replace the tailgate, and those aren't available yet aftermarket, so that means searching uh, long and hard for a good used part. FJ60s, it's the body. When you are wanting to buy one, a solid body is worth its weight in gold. The last thing I want to talk about with respect to rust is the frame. 60 and 62 frames don't all rust, but there are some common rusted areas. And in situations like this, the rust got so bad that we had to replace the whole frame. So you want to watch specifically in the rear of the frame on either side of the spare tire, you'll see the metal start to separate as rust grows in between the layers. And that's not the only rust problem on this frame, but that combined with rust on some of the other suspension hangers mean, meant that this frame had to go. So the third thing to consider when you're buying an FJ60 or FJ62 is the mechanical condition. And that's gonna take a little bit more looking into or inspection, maybe by a qualified mechanic before you know exactly what it's like. But in a nutshell, you can tell a lot by just looking at the condition of the engine. So let's check this one out. I like the looks of this engine compartment already. I can tell that it hasn't been messed with. It has the original carburetor. It has all of the original emissions components. It's got the original Toyota hose clamps. It, it looks like it's a little older and dirtier, but just like it would have looked like in 1984 or five or six, uh, whenever this Land Cruiser was made, um, was at the dealership. It, it, it hasn't been tampered with, and that means that it's worth more money to me right away. Um, anything looks like added on wiring, anything other than the factory air cleaner system and carburetor is gonna make that Land Cruiser worth less money, unless it's had a really nice engine conversion. All FJ60s sold in the United States had a four-speed manual transmission and a transfer case that pretty much didn't have many problems. Sometimes the synchros go out, and if you can drive the vehicle and the transmission feels good, you don't hear any extra noise, then you know that that's in pretty good shape. Other than that, and a visual inspection, you should always check the oil. Uh, if you have the opportunity, look at the antifreeze, make sure that that's nice and green, and you know, just other things that you think about when you want to look at a used car. But if the body is good and clean, and it looks like the vehicle's been taken care of, I bet you that the engine and transmission transfer case also has been taken care of. Something Jeremiah didn't talk about was the differences between an FJ60 and an FJ62. Even though they look very similar, Toyota made a lot of drivability improvements when they introduced the FJ62 in 1988. The most notable of the improvements were the engine and transmission. Toyota replaced the long-running 2F with the fuel-injected 4-liter 3FE. They also added an automatic transmission with overdrive for better highway speeds. There were minor changes too, like more steering caster angle for better highway drivability, bigger side view mirrors, a dash redesign, and a new grille and headlight doors to accommodate four rectangular headlights. So use this information when you're looking at an FJ60 or 62. Make sure you pick out a solid body and that you pay a fair price for it and you'll be cruising in style in no time. Thanks for watching this special edition episode of Profits Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. Don't forget to subscribe and watch our other episodes as well. Army, and he 
had troops that were so focused that he could march them for days without stopping, without rest, uh, just using uh, methods of focus techniques. Mark has that kind of focus that he's wearing. Yes, it's a good thing. <laughs> It took him three minutes and six seconds to finally. Well, you said that I didn't realize. <laughs> I, it's just because I wasn't giving you a hard time about the camera. Well, it's because I don't have like a real camera. I've got my phone. Yay!